everybody! So my name's Catherine and I work for the Marine Conservation Society. So normally maybe on my weekends I'd be heading out rock pooling but of course just now because I don't live within walking distance of the coast I am getting to know my little garden extremely well. So today instead of going rock pooling I thought I'd do some mini beast hunting in the garden and see what we can find and maybe together we can learn a little bit more about all these wonderful creatures that are literally living right on our doorstep that are probably the distant cousins of all of the amazing creatures that we normally find in our rock pooling. So luckily I had some of my rock pooling kit here at home ready to go. So most importantly, I've got some of these little bug pots with some magnifying tops. So we'll be able to have a look through those, have a close look. So I'm gonna go explore the garden and see what we can find. Okay, so a little little bit like rock pooling when the best thing is to carefully remove stones and look in little crevices to see if we can find any creatures that are taking shelter. When we're mini beast hunting, thought we would try the same approach and try gently lift things up and see if there's anything living underneath. So what I did was removed one of the plant pots and had a wee look underneath to see what might have been taking shelter where it was nice and damp and dark and protected. And we've managed to find a few creatures. Would you like to see them? Let's have a wee look. So this was my plant pot here, and this is where it had been sitting. So can you see where all the stones are still quite wet and damp? And then I very carefully lifted some of the creatures into the tray. So what can you spot? So we've got a little slug just down here coming up. You can see his slime trail behind him. And these two bizarre little balls, I think are a species of wood louse. So we'll have to find out what they are. And the fact that they can curl up to protect themselves in that armour is pretty incredible. And then somebody was extremely fast. Who can you spot in there? We see our spider. There he goes. I wonder if I come round the corner here. Can you see him? Now I've got no idea what kind of spider he is, but we'll have to see if we can find out. So if you have a look, See if there's any identifying features on him. And then we'll have to look it up and see if we know what kind of spider he is. Now, just the same for rock pooling. Any creatures that we do then take out, we want to make sure we put back exactly where they came from, as that's their home. So I'll pop them all safely back in here, and then we'll go try another spot and see what we can find. So here's a bit of a better look at that, that spider we found just before I put him back. So can you see he's got some beautiful markings down his body. And you can see his legs. Now, are you able to actually count how many legs you can see? He's moving very fast with them. And look at what colour he is as well. And then we'll use all of those notes that we've been taking to see if we can find out maybe what kind of spider he is. Can you see those little mandibles, those little kind of hooky arms he's got right at the front? That's what he'll be using for eating. You can see them moving there. It looked like he was cleaning something off his leg. Right, let's pop him back. And here's a bit of a closer look at our slug as well. Now everyone thinks they move really slowly, but I think this one is actually moving pretty fast. And can you see those kind of antenna growing out the front of his head, using maybe to sense where he's going? And look at that lovely tail. It's almost like a swishing tail. Look how long he can stretch out. And again, like the spider, can you see he's actually got some really nice markings on his back? Now, I don't know about you. I have to admit, I've never looked really closely at slugs before. But I think he's actually quite beautiful. Look at those lovely markings and look at the way he's moving. Now his cousins, the sea slugs known as nudibranchs, come in all sorts of wonderful colours as well. A little bit more brighter normally than our garden slugs. But you can see he's actually going to be really well camouflaged when we put him back in the garden, which is the most important thing. So then our slug won't get eaten by any predators. So let's pop him back where it's nice and dark and where he'll blend in. So I've just checked in another corner of the garden and I found another woodlouse, but he looks different to the other two. The other two curled up straight away, but this one doesn't seem to want to curl up. So I wonder if there may be a different kind of woodlouse. So can you see if you have a really close look? How did they maybe 
differ from the ones we found earlier on. Look at how fast they can move. How many legs does this one have? That's another one for us to look up later on. Now look at who I found now. So these two were underneath an old plant pot that had been turned up the wrong way in a corner of the garden. Now they look a little bit the same, but also quite different too. So I'm going to have a guess and maybe say they're going to be a kind of centipede or millipede. Because if you look really closely, they have a lot of legs. Now I wonder if anyone knows the difference between a millipede and a centipede. I wonder if we've got one of each here. I don't know. So I'm going to have to look this up when we head back inside and see which one's which. But you can see that they've got antenna at the front. Look, there's one looking say, oh, you're in here too. What's happened? And they're starting to stretch out. One's definitely bigger than the other. And do you notice they're slightly different colours as well? The smaller one seems to be starting to make a move. And I wonder if the bigger one will maybe follow. Looks like they're thinking about it. So I'll show you. So this is where I find them. So in amongst lots of old pine needles. Oh, we've got another little wood louse in there as well. So it was a lot drier. It wasn't as damp. So I wonder if they like maybe a drier environment. We'll have to find out. And I'll zoom in and see if I can take a picture. So you'll be able to use that to help identify them. So we know what kind of animal we're actually looking at. Now, when I was just putting back what I think were our millipedes and centipedes, look who popped up. Does anyone know what this creature is that's climbing inside the bug pot? I think it might be one of our ants. Now, from my limited knowledge of ants, if there's one, I feel like there must be a lot more because they normally big, big anthill nests where they all live and work together to protect each other. Now I wonder if you can closely look at him and see how many legs can you see? How many body parts can you see? And again, I wonder if that will help us confirm if they are an ant and maybe what kind of ant they are as well. There we go, climbing on top now, trying to get out. So I'll put them back where I found them, right next to the plant pot, again where it was quite dry in amongst the pine needles. And we'll go to our last spot and see if there's anything else we can find. So one of the last places I was going to look is in my garden containers, which is where we sometimes keep some of our camping stuff and the bird food, as there's usually always some creepy crawlies jumping out. Before I even open it, look who I've spotted on the outside. So we've found our first snail. So we can't see much of his body just now. He's obviously all cozied up inside their shell. But how impressive is that? They're strong enough to hold onto a vertical wall and wonder where they're traveling to, trying to find something to eat. Now, a bit like our slug, they just have that kind of one body. I think it's called a foot, one foot. And it's almost like one giant rasping tongue that they then use to scrape up food. Lovely. Do you like to go around licking the pavement? No, I don't think so. That's how our snails eat, I think. But again, we're going to have to make sure that maybe they do eat the same way as their seaside cousins, because maybe our garden ones are different. So again, can you see the colour, the lovely pattern on the shell? and maybe find out what kind of snail it is and maybe how and what do they like to eat. So I've just opened up the container and look, we've got another snail and you can see some of that foot and you've looked really carefully. Can you see two little antenna or one of them just popped back into the shell? And there's actually another one just on the lip here as well. It's obviously a nice place for our snails to be hanging out inside our garden box. 
So there we go everyone, that was my 10 minute mini beast hunt instead of my normal rock pooling and I was really fascinated about how many creatures managed to find in just 10 minutes just by lifting up a few plant pots, looking in a few dark protected places that these creatures like to hang out because it's nice and safe or that's maybe where they can get their food. Now I'm going to need to learn a lot because I don't know very much about garden animals so will you maybe help me looking back at the video, back at the pictures and let's see if we can identify what creatures they are, maybe what they like to eat and then maybe next weekend we can head back out for a mini beast hunt and see if we find any other creatures. So hopefully I've maybe inspired you to head out into your garden or just even on your doorstep and have a wee look and see if there's any creatures hiding under things. Just a jam jar would be perfect. Just be really careful picking them up. And once you've had a look at them, maybe taken a photo, maybe drawn a sketch, make sure you put them back where they came from and then we can head inside and see what we can see what there is to discover to learn all about where they live. So happy mini beast hunting everyone.